Yesterday I talked about using the ACTA, but I didn't really introduce you formally. So today that's what I want to do. I want to tell you more about the ACTA, um, which is a machine that we use to help us purify proteins. So ACTA is technically a brand name, but it's kind of like Kleenex in the sense that people just say ACTA and I don't even really, um, it's all I've ever used. Um, and so, but technically what it is, it's a fast protein liquid chromatography system, FPLC. Um, so yeah, so ACTA is a lot shorter to say. So what it is, is so chromatography is this idea that you take two things and you, um, you have like a stationary phase and a mobile phase. And you have something in the mobile phase that goes through the stationary phase. And if it likes, if the stuff in that mobile phase likes the stationary phase better, it'll like slow down and hang out with that stationary phase. And if it likes the mobile phase better, it'll go through. So with this, um, with FPLC, what we're doing is we're doing it in columns. Um, these columns formed with, filled with these little beads called resin. And there are different kinds of resin that interact differently with different things. And so the things that I'm talking about separating, in my case, I'm purifying proteins. So I have a solution that's filled with a mixture of different proteins and I want to separate them. And so, I flow them through the column, and so the buffer, so the pH stabilized salt water that the protein is in, that's going to be our mobile phase. And then the stationary phase is the resin, so those little beads in the column. And so the protein is in this um, buffer, and so if it likes the buffer more than it likes the beads, it'll go through quickly. But if it likes the beads, it'll get stuck, or it'll travel more slowly through the beads. And so then once it gets to the bottom of the column, what it actually, what we call it when we come out of the column is we call that elution. So we say that the protein elutes from the column. Depending on how much it liked what was in the column, so that stationary phase versus the buffer that it was in, the mobile phase, that's going to determine how long it takes to get out of the column. So how long it takes for the protein to elute. And so, then what happens is that you have this um, UV monitor that after the column, and it's going to come here, and it's going to give you this readout. So this is showing you the um, the the elution. So the um, sorry, this is right now it's in milliliters. So this is in how much is eluted from the column since you started. If you look at something like this, so you can see this run, I had um, this, um, my sample I was going through, and this is an, um, this was an ion exchange, so the resin was binding to the protein based on charge, and then I competed off with increasing amounts of salt. So here when I have um, a lower salt, you see this peak representing um, the less um, positively charged fraction. And then when I up the salt, I get this more positively charged fraction. So it's positively charged because this is a cation exchange column. So don't worry about that all for now, but I just wanted to show you the chromatogram. And so what it's doing is if I zoom in, I can see what fractions it came out of. So when it's coming out of the column, I have it get it sent through into this fraction collector. And so the fraction collector, it has this tray and it has these different inserts you can put in. So I was, for that, I used this 96 well block. Um, so it's a steep well block, um, but because I wanted small fractions, but there are also, if I want bigger fractions, I can use the like tubes. And that's good for like keeping things that flow through um, when you don't think your protein should be in it, like during a wash step. Um, so you don't want to like collect all these little fractions because your protein shouldn't be there, but in case it is in there, you don't want it to just go out into the waste. So that's the waste. So if you're in a lab, make sure you replace, you empty the waste because people don't empty the waste and then it overflows and then, yeah, there's just a wet mess you have to clean up. So don't be that person. But anyway, let me show you more about um, the ACTA because it can be really kind of like intimidating. Like when I saw, first saw an ACTA, I was like terrified. Um, because there's all these tubes and stuff, but it's really, um, it's really not that big of a deal. Um, you just have to learn where the tubes, what tubes go where. Um, so if you're using the Acta with the Unicorn software, what's really nice is that, um, it has this flow path monitor. So you can see that, um, you have these sample, you have these inlets. So that's where your buffers are going to go. They go through these pumps 
they can get the pumps can they mix them so you can like mix a low salt and a no salt um, a high salt and a low no salt and then get different concentrations of salt um, or competitor or no competitor um, that sort of thing and there's also this other line which goes through the sample pump and so this has um, you can have it go pump up your sample or um, buffer to like chase your sample or whatever in some of the methods but anyways so that's going through the sample pump line and it goes into here and here's like the central hub where there's it's kind of like a subway with a bunch of different tracks so you can think of the tubing as all these different tracks and there's different like valves that can send it one place or another so we have this you can have a loop um, so you can hold your sample in this loop um, until you're ready for it to inject onto the column and you choose what column you want so there's different column positions and then you can choose if you want it to flow up or down, and then it's going to go through a UV monitor. So that's going to be where we get our chromatograph stuff. So that's going to see where the protein comes out. A conductivity meter um, is so that's like the conductivity is good to monitor if um, that's going to a lot largely reflect the buffer. Um, so like how much salt and stuff is in the buffer. But it's good for seeing if your column is equilibrated because if you change the buffer um, to equilibrate it, so get the column all filled with the new buffer, then you want to make sure that the um, conductivity stabilizes at the new point. Um, then it goes through a pH um, sensor um, and then the outlet. So right now it's just in this wash phase, so it's going to the waste, but you can also set it to go to the fraction collector. Um, so let's look at where these things are actually on the acta. So this is an Acta Pure. This is the one that I'm used to using the most. Um, here's an older Acta. You can see this is the Acta Explorer. I'm really lucky in that I'm in this um, structural biology lab where we do a ton of protein purification. So we actually have four Actas. So we have three Acta Pures and one Explorer. Um, and we have these deli fridges. So we keep everything cold in here to keep our uh, proteins cold and happy. In undergrad, we had, only had this like little bench top Acta and it didn't have the fridge so we had like a column around the column that actually like had a water bath that was keeping it cool um, but anyway so here is the Acta so you can see that you can put different columns in so these are size exclusion columns so separating based on size this is a cation exchange column so that's what I was talking about before when you um, get positively charged proteins to bind and then unbind there are also, um, so you can see the columns are different shapes and sizes, um, so you can also get columns in different sizes. Um, here are some his trap um, columns, and so these screw in like this actually, and you can, you can um, link up so this has two in a row for some extra um, capacity. And then we also have like super long size exclusion columns too. But what's going to happen is, so you have your buffer lines. Um, and so right now they're all just in water. Um, so we put um, water with um, sodium azide in it to keep fungi and stuff from growing. Then that's going to, um, these. they have these buffer lines. And the buffers, so we have like an in A, we have A1 and A2 and B1 and B2. And so those are the buffer, um, those are the buffer pumps and mixers. Um, so you can mix and match like an A and a B um, but you can also use A1 and A2 separately, but you can't like mix A1 and A2. But anyways, yeah. Um, so once it goes, the buffer line, the buffer lines are going to put things onto your column if you tell it to do that. Um, then once you go through the column, so you can see this tubing lines going into the column and out of the column. And so these tubings are really thin, so you wanna make sure that your protein is filtered before you try putting it through this stuff. Um, these are the sample loops. So this is where you can like hold your protein. So you can inject it into here and hold it in here until you're ready for it to come out. This is an air sensor because you don't want air to get into your column. That's really bad um, for the column. So it has an air sensor to prevent that. Um, some other things it has. So this is the UV monitor. These are just holders, clamps for holding things. Um, some more mixers. Um, yeah, that's most of this stuff, yeah. So, but the basic thing to keep, so here's the um, conductivity meter. So the most important thing to keep in mind is that if you can, you just wanna make sure that you keep track of where, the which tube goes where, 
and you can always refer to like the user manual, which is helpful. Um, these, those little, those tubes um, that you might see, so this is the sample mixer and the sample pump. Um, that tube next to it is filled with um, so an ethanol solution that uses, that like backfill, uh, like cleans the system type stuff. Um, so you need to replace that periodically and a lot of people don't, which is not good, so don't be that person either. Um, so a key thing to keep track of is you want to make sure that there's no air in your line. So see this line is um, dry. What you can do if there's air in a line is, so it should give you an error, but um, what you can do is you can actually like use a syringe to manually prime it. So you set it to like go to um, run and then you actually like pull to get help get that air out. Um, so yeah, so if you have air in your column, it can cause these um, problems. One of the signs that you have air in your column is if you get like, um, if you look at your chromatograph and you look at the system pressure, it's going to like be all, or the conductivity is going to be all spiky and jackety. And if you look at the fractions, they're going to be different sizes. Um, so that can be a big problem. So I'll always check your line. I like to manually prime mine before the runs, even if I can't see any air because I've had some bad experiences. Um, the um, so we have different yeah we have so the sample um, sample loops they come in different sizes so like 500 microliters um, one mil two mil we also have this thing called a super loop so not every actor has a, the sample um, pump so the sample pump is really great because we can stick one of those lines into the sample and it will um, suck it up for us. But if you don't have one of those, or if it's broken, um, which happened to me once, um, you can use this thing called a sample, uh, like a super loop, and you fill it up and you attach it like it's a sample loop. So it's like it's holding it, but it holds a ton of volume. I forgot to tell you about the pressure monitors. So there's a pressure monitor at the before it goes into the column and after it comes out of the column. So the pressure monitor before the column gives you the pre-column pressure. The pressure monitor after the column gives you the post-column pressure. And the difference between them is the delta com column, column pressure. And so you want to set the, um, if you're not using, um, if you're using it manually, you want to set the pressure limit. So each column has different pressure limits. Um, and you can find these in the column handling function. Um, and then if you go to like manual, execute manual extractions, you can do alarms and set the pressures. Uh, so, so you can set free column and delta pressure. And that way, um, the software will stop before you hurt your column. And so you can see that this column is kind of messed up. You see this um, big gap in the top? That shouldn't be there. You should have like the top of this right there. And so this suggests that there's like pressure built, there's too much pressure. And in fact, when I tried to run that column, I could only run it like really slowly uh, without the pressure getting. So there's ways to um, try to address that gap at least. Um, and you can actually remove the top and try to probably like replace the filter on the top um, and then put it down. But it's really bad when you have that with size exclusion columns because then it changes the elution volumes and stuff. So that's not good. Um, so yeah, it's important to take really good care of everything in your ACTA. Sometimes you'll have problems with the tubes. Um, and so you can, one way to fix it is to like snip off um, problem parts of the tubes that get um, like kinked or stuff. Um, but, and the other thing is, so sometimes the tubing can pop out. So with these, the tubing, when you stick the tubing in, you want to make sure that, so there's a lot of like different tubing. So the green tubing, oh, I'm showing you on my own side. Okay, the green tubing is like one of the common tubings. And then this adapter thing is gonna screw in. When you're screwing it in, you wanna make sure that you have the tubing out. So it's not, um, and then you want to push in and really crank and then after you do that you want to pull out and make sure that it's tight because that can pop out and cause you to lose your protein or stuff um so that's not good so yes so i hope i convinced you that the acta is really not as scary as it looks um and of course be sure to ask someone um who's familiar with actas um before you try to
do anything with an ACTA, but it's really, um, don't be intimidated. It's super, super useful, and it keeps you from having to use the cold room sometimes. Although, you might have to use it in the cold room if you don't have our deli fridge. But, um, happy purifying.